We have this great playground in our neighborhood called Jacob Javits Playground. It's right across the street from Fort Tryon Park, which if you're familiar with this part of Manhattan, is a park that overlooks the Hudson River. And we get this great light which seems to envelop this part of Upper Manhattan in a special way. This particular night, I was walking by the playground and I saw the the Mr. Softy truck. Didn't really think twice about it, but then I was captivated by the mix of colors, the lighting, the mood. It seemed quite magical to me. So I took a photo. I knew I wanted to revisit this and paint it somehow, but I knew it was going to be a challenge. Here you can see me penciling the image. I usually compose the image in the camera. So I don't really spend much time recomposing as I'm uh, sketching the underlying drawing for the painting. It's already done. But for a painting of this size, which is around 16 by 20 inches, I usually will lay down a grid. And I've also used an app on my phone to overlay a grid on top of the image. So I have that available. And that allows me to scale up the much smaller image on my device uh, to any size paper I want, as long as I keep the same grid layout, which on this one was about four by four. And you can see I've, I'm erasing as I go along as well. I've made some mistakes. I try to keep the proportions as similar to the actual scene that I captured, but sometimes it's it's going to be off. Uh, it's not perfect. And you can see that I've shot this from many different angles due to the position of the paper on my desk and also just having moved the camera around. So there's different lighting because I'm also doing this at different times of day usually early morning or late at night. I knew when I saw the scene that it was going to be both a challenge and an experience depicting the menus that are on the side of the truck and the drawings. There are many illustrations on a Mr. Sophie truck if you um, ever get a chance to stop and look at one. Um, it's actually quite interesting how many drawings and colors um, and different images are on the side of a truck. It's probably done mechanically, but I'm sure there was a time when someone was actually reproducing that um, on every truck. Here you can see I've turned the drawing upside down so that I could start with a wash really to, to lay down the background, which was a, a very light blue and purplish sky. So I've turned the painting upside down in order to best control the water um, so that it flows towards me and not towards the bottom of the painting, which is the truck. I needed to keep the truck and the foreground free of any color at this point. So I've started filling in some green uh, for the background, for some of the portions of the trees that are further away. And I'm also laying down a wash of green just to give more depth to, to the foliage uh, later on when I come back and add some more solid or darker colors. It will make those stand out a little bit better. And all the while I'm trying to stay clear of the contours of the truck. I try to keep that, trying to keep that as clean as possible so I can um, do what I need to do on that later and have some clean edges to work with. Here I'm using black to fill in some of the darkest areas um, behind the truck. And also I'm starting to fill in some of the branches. I really enjoy putting down the darker colors when I can because they 
well, it's satisfying, but also it helps to provide the contours that will make something feel real. Here I'm doing the branches. And again, because the branches are in the, are really in the sky and they're backlit by this magnificent color all around, they can really just be pretty black. No need for me to use any tints or other colors. But for some of the branches that are very thin or some that are further away, I will use a more diluted black, closer to gray, to, to show them. You'll see that I'm going back and forth from one section of a painting to the other. That's often because I've put down something and I need it to dry before I move on, before I do um, anything else with that particular area. And so it's always, it's a good opportunity to move to another place in the painting as, as, as that's drying. When you get to the point where you're ready to start filling in some of the darkest um, outlines and shadows, it's really fun because you start to envision what it's going to look like in the end. And with the fence, especially, it really helps to cement uh, what is the foreground, what's the background. And it's, it's pretty fun once you get to that stage. Here I'm rubbing off uh, some of the liquid mask that I was using to reserve the white space uh, to represent the light. You'll see there's still some liquid mask on the surface of the truck and that's really to preserve the brightest parts of the paper to represent um, reflections in the metal. Um, those are sometimes harder to, to show uh, unless you're actually using the white of the paper. So you can see that I, I'm laying another layer of, of paint on top of the layer that's already dried. And sometimes that's because I've realized, you know, what I need to add another color to it to get the right tone or the right, um, or, or even just laying down the same color so that I get the right value so it's, that it's a little bit darker. This scene has a good mix of detail and also flat surfaces. It's more fun to me sometimes to have a good mix, more detailed surfaces, more detailed uh, pieces of the image along with sections that are a little bit easier to, to paint. You can also see that I've switched between various brushes. Sometimes you need a, a finer brush, uh, a smaller sized brush to get to little nooks and crannies to uh, get to the finer details. And the larger brush uh, you would use to cover a greater area. So here I'm starting on the graphics that are on the surface of the truck. Some of these are pretty fun to do. I'm also trying to capture the greens of the fluorescent lighting inside the truck. You can see a woman uh, with a phone to her, to her ear. You can barely make out the contours of, of her, but it, it was fun to, um, to show her in there. Now here, I'm finally getting to the wheel wells of the truck. And again, that's really satisfying as well. Anytime you add black, it really helps the shapes to pop and makes you feel like you're nearing the end as well. Here I'm erasing some liquid mask that I was using on top of the air conditioner exhaust. And then going over some of that white area with, with, with paint helps to kind of make, give it a dirty look. The lettering on the truck was, was pretty fun to do as well. Makes you think there's a lot of work that goes into, um, decorating one of these trucks.
definitely makes you appreciate it more. These menu displays were fun to do. Uh, it was too small for me to paint actual words, so I, I'm just kind of faking it. But it's surprising how much you can convey with uh, just, a, just a few um, drops of paint. You don't have to get all these little ice cream cones exactly correct. I, I wasn't really trying for that. I would just be disappointed if I really did, but um, just the general contours of each ice cream cone and the shapes of the ice cream um, really helps um, to get the message across. You don't really have to look at it too hard and it um, should be pretty apparent what it is. So hopefully I've done that. And then here I'm really near the end. I'm starting to um, add the finest details. Um, I've left those for the end, like some of the bolts here on the, the window frame, adding some final shading and, and, and um, lines, line work to help um, give things uh, the shape that they ought to be. I'm adding shadow here to make the sign really look more 3D, the uh, slow crossing sign. And then here I'm using a little bit of white to add some highlighting that uh, was, it would just be too fine for me to um, try to convey using watercolors. There you have it. Thanks for watching.